Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ayyul Ahbab The prayer of the traveler uh, can sometimes be a challenge. And one of the issues that a person may face in their travels, especially when they're in flight, or perhaps they're on a bus, or some, some form of transport, is trying to determine where the Qibla is. So we need to take a look at what is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this regard to make things easier for us. And in the hadith on Abdullah ibn Umar or the hadith of Ibn Sarin on Anas ibn Sarin rahimahullah ta'ala qal Astakbalana Anasan Radiallahu Tala Anhu Hina Kadima Minashem Falakainahu bi Aina Tamar Faraaituhu Yusali Ala Himar wa Wajhuhu Mindha al Janib Yani An Yasar al Kibla Fukultu Raituka to Sali Lihaira Kibla فقال لو لا أني رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يفعله ما فعلته رواه بخاري ومسلم In this hadith, the hadith of an uh, Anas uh, ibn Sarin رحمه الله تعالى who he met Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Anas ibn Sarin was the was a tabi'i or he, he was a son of uh, the tabi the great Imam ibn Sarin Muhammad ibn Sarin rahimahullah ta'ala rahimahumullah jami'an so he met Anas ibn Malik as he was going to uh, Shem, meaning he was traveling to like the area which is Syria and, and Jordan and so forth. And they met him and they saw him. He was riding uh, and he was facing... Uh, to a place, Aina Timur, which is a, a, a place which is on the border of Iraq, on the west side, the west border of Iraq. And uh, he, he saw Enes, radiallahu ta'ala, and who praying, saw him pray on a, uh, on a, uh, a donkey, and he was facing to the left of the Qibla. So he wasn't facing exactly the Qibla, he was facing to the left of the Qibla. He wasn't facing in the direction of the Qibla. And then he said to him, afterwards, I saw you praying to other than the Qibla, in the direction other than the Qibla. You know, other than the Kaaba and Mecca. And Anas, radiallahu ta'ala, who replied by saying, if I had not seen the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing this, then I would have not done it. And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. Ayul Ahbab, the benefits of this hadith are many. But one of the most important uh, aspects of this hadith or things that we can attain from this hadith that the ulama have made clear is the importance Let's read what Sheikh Ali Bussam, Rahimallah Ta'ala, what he says, because he's going to mention it very directly. 
he said first that this hadith doesn't make clear for us exactly if was Anas praying his fard, you know, was he praying one of his 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 regular uh, prayers that he he's responsible for, or he was praying, uh, you know, uh, the the nawafil or the um, the extra prayers, the extra sunnah, so to speak. It doesn't make clear that, but the but the sheikh said, rahimahullah taala, he said, but it's well known that it was uh, the extra prayer that it was an uh, nafil. And that is because that was uh, what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did on more than one occasion. And Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu saw him and other than him saw him do this. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us That the person who is praying and they are on an, a riding animal, if they're on a camel, a donkey, a horse, what have you, or uh, I guess in some places an elephant even, or a greyhound bus like we have in America, or uh, on the airplane, which is very common for many of us in traveling, that they're, the direction of the Qibla is the direction that they're facing meaning that it's permissible for them to pray other than the Qibla. Now we're going to get to the conditions for that. And here's what the next thing the Sheikh uh, mentions, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He says it shows that another benefit of this hadith, that it's permissible to pray the uh, nafila prayers, meaning your, your sunnah prayers, on a riding animal while you're traveling, even if it was a donkey. Okay? Let's break that down and look at this. So when, what we learn from this, as the ulama made clear, is there are some conditions for uh, face, not facing the Qibla during uh, prayer. And there are basically three. And he's mentioned them uh, in, in, in his uh, fayda here. The first one is that it should be nafila, that it should not be your wajib, your fard salat. So you shouldn't pray asr, not facing the qibla. You should strive your best to pray facing the qibla. The first, the first thing is that it should be sunnah prayer, meaning nafila, and and it should and that you are on a riding animal, or you're you're on some sort of transport. You could be on the train, the bus, the airplane. The and those riding beasts, which was in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so that you need to be in in transit on a tra on a uh, in a riding on something. And the th the third thing is that you should be a musafir. You should be a traveler. So that wouldn't be appropriate if you are in your own city and you are even if you're on the bus or what have you to pray not facing the Qibla with the, the Sunnah prayer. So it needs to have those three conditions. And those three conditions, again, as we mentioned, that you should be a traveler, it should be your Sunnah prayers, and you should be, of course, on, trans, on transport. So, if you're, so for example, if the person, they are a traveler, they're in another land, and it's, they're praying their Sunnah prayers, and but they're not on a riding animal. They're not riding, they're not in transit, they're not on a, a plane or a bus or a train or anything. Then they should pray facing the Qibla. Those three conditions need to be in place. Another benefit of this hadith, as one of our mashayikh said, he said that this also, this hadith illustrates the guidance of the Salaf of this Ummah, that the, uh, of the traveler face and, and the traveler uh, and the manners of traveling, the manners uh, uh, pertinent to that re re related to your ibadah. So this shows us uh, a lot of very important things and letting us know that we should strive our best to always face the Qibla. But the person who's a traveler on a riding uh, 
in transit and on uh, a traveler and on, on, on transit and they um, and they are praying their nafila prayer then they are not responsible for facing the Qibla. It's permissible for them to face other than the Qibla. That does not mean you should intentionally not face the Qibla. But it means that if you don't know where the Qibla is, and you don't have the... It's permissible. It's not... Uh, it doesn't affect your prayer. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the al-nafirs, kan tayyibu wa amana muttaqabbili wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.